Today I wanted to do a quick tutorial video in real time that will show you how you can create this nice retro night sky. For this tutorial I'm using a Sprite software, a 240 by 240 pixel canvas, and the EGA color palette. Okay, let's get started. We go up to new file, and our canvas size is going to be 240 by 240 pixels. The rest of these options will be default. Once we get into our drawing here, we're going to come up here to this preset palette. And today we're going to be using this palette called CGA. If you double click on it, it will add it in here. And I like to sort the palette by hue. Okay, now I've heard some other folks having questions about the layer dialog and if, if you'd like to move it, you can click on this little slider button here. I believe it starts by default at the bottom area, which this is good for animations because it gives you lots of room for different frames. I like to keep it on the right here. Once you've set that, you can just click out, and there it is. Okay, so for our first layer, we're going to start with just a dark background. I'm going to use our black here. We'll make a new layer, and we will add our sky. For our sky, we're going to use this light blue we're going to fade it up to the darker blue. So we'll select the light blue as our foreground and the dark blue as our background color. Then we'll come over to the dithering tool or the gradient tool. And we're going to select the buyer matrix 8x8 here. And we'll start from the bottom. And... Maybe we'll go up a little higher than that. Right there. Now we'll select our blue and black. Okay, we want a lot of dark sky. So we can add in our stars later. Let's get our preview window here sized up. Okay, now the next layer, we're going to add in a foreground. And these are just going to be some hills. Oh, my brush is too big here. I want just a one pixel brush. Okay, we've got some foreground, and we're just going to add some trees in here. Start by drawing their main trunks here. Put some close to each other in little clumps, some spread apart, some bigger, some smaller. Okay, and for some of these we will just do some loose side-to-side -side motions here to draw in the shape of a pine tree. Sometimes it's easy to get a little wild. But we don't have to be too picky about the shape here. Especially for the little ones. Some of these we can 
just add some branches off of here. Like these trees didn't make it. Perhaps there was a fire that came through here. Okay, we're getting closer here. It's good to zoom out and make sure the shapes are believable. This one's a little wonky. I think that looks better. Another skeleton of a tree there. This is going to end up being a kind of a clump of trees. over here. Okay, that should be good for our foreground trees. Next, we're going to add another layer just behind our foreground. So we'll select the sky layer and do new layer, shift N and then shift P to name it mountains. And for the mountains, we're going to start with a temporary um, color here because they will be kind of bluish in the end. But right now we want something that will differentiate itself from the sky. And we'll just rough in some mountain shapes here. Maybe it sneaks back behind there. And I'll fill that in. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna end up making a pattern of this dark blue and black in this checkerboard pattern here. We select it, do Control B, to create a new brush of that kind. And now we can select our entire mountain range, use our paint bucket tool by hitting G. We can paste that in there. And then another thing we want to do, now that we've got our, um, our mountains created here, we want to select the entire layer. And the easiest way to do that is to go on to a different layer and then control click the mountain layer here. That will get the whole thing selected. And we want to go to our black color, hit back here to get rid of our dither pattern, pattern brush. And then we're just going to hit S to do a stroke around the whole thing. We were selected on the sky layer. Okay, now that we're on the mountain layer, hit S, and that will do a black outline here, which kind of will help differentiate it from this similar colored sky. Okay, next we're going to add some texture to the mountains. So we'll go ahead and reselect our mountains here. And using the black we're going to add some shadows to the mountains. The lighting in this scenario is coming from the upper right here. So the left side of these mountains is going to be a little more shaded. I mean, it is a dark scene, but there is some moonlight. We're just being real rough with these strokes here.
Use these to differentiate some overlapping mountains. Don't need to go too crazy. Some of these steeper ones will get real dark here. Just on the edges. Okay, we can kind of zoom out. That looks pretty good. And now we're going to do the same thing with the blue color to add some highlight to the lit side. This is just a real subtle effect. But it works well. Okay. Yeah, those mountains look pretty nice. And one thing that we can do to kind of add some mist near the bottom of the mountains is we can select our blue color here. I'm using the eyedropper tool by doing alt and clicking on the blue square. That'll select it in our palette. Then we can come up here and go to select color range. And that will automatically pre-fill this blue color in here. And now we've selected that blue color through this entire um, layer. And we can just come in here. I mean, this is kind of hard to see with all of this selection. So we'll zoom in on our preview just so we can make sure things are looking good as we go here. And we'll just kind of add in some horizontal strokes. And we're only going across those blue squares. Try to add a little more where the foreground is overlapping but i think that's enough there control d to deselect and i think that looks good okay now let's do a new layer above the mountain layer this is going to be our small stars layer and as we come up here we're going to first select our dark blue color and do shift B to select the spray tool up here. And to begin with, we're going to do a spray width of 16 and a speed of four. And we'll just do little clicks around here. Layering in some randomly placed stars here. Don't need to worry about being even or anything like that. Oops, you just don't want to move your mouse when you do it or else it'll end up doing something like that. Just small clicks. Don't be afraid to add quite a number of these darker blue stars. Then we're going to do something similar with the lighter blue color. We're going to add fewer of these. These are going to appear brighter, which would mean that they're closer to us. Let's move our preview window to our sky here. I think that's looking good. Now let's start working on some more concentrations of stars. Let's go back to our blue, dark blue color here. And we're gonna do some, some more concentrations. Really concentrating it in the middle of the screen here. And we'll come down to maybe a spray width of eight 
to kind of get some on the end. We want the idea that there's some directionality to these stars. Okay, let's go back to maybe 12 spray width and do some of the brighter stars here. right near the center of this mass. In fact, we're going to use some red stars in here as well. Don't go overboard on the red. You could also add some green in here. And even some gray on the periphery will look yellow against these colors. There, that kind of gives us a concentration. Let's add some more bright stars in here, kind of bridge the gap off in that direction. Not, not that much. There we go. Okay, that's a nice looking sky. And maybe we could add a couple bigger stars. We'll do that on its own layer. Shift N for a new layer. Shift P to rename the layer. Large stars. And for that, what we could do is we could use a bit of this cyan color here. That will be the bright inside of the star, and then maybe some dark blue outside. And we can select that, Control B to create a brush for it. We want to select Paint Brush here, and then we can just click instances of it around. Now, one thing that seems to work is when you put three things near one another. For some reason, three stars in a line is pleasing to the eye. Okay, we'll discard that paintbrush and we'll try another star with that cyan bright center and we'll do the darker cyan as another color of star here. These ones are going to appear a bit brighter. You could even add a constellation up here. Kind of looks like the Big Dipper. Okay. Let's go back to the small stars. Give our paintbrush. Let's add a few more. Oops. Discard that custom brush there. Let's add a few stars that are peeking over this brighter blue. And then what we're going to do with that sky, just to kind of break up this dithering pattern a little bit, is we're going to select our paintbrush, select black, we're on the sky layer, and we're just going to kind of run that through the dithering pattern to break it up. We can do the same thing with the blue color in here. And even the light blue. Oops, I didn't get the light blue selected there. Be careful with the light blue and all. Let's 
clumping up a bit there. There, I think that's good. All right, I think we're almost done. I want to add one last touch. The very top here, let's add a lookout tower right on this little area, this high point of the foreground mountain. Oops, we want our pencil, not our spray brush. It's gonna be a tall one here. These are the sports that'll be holding the housing up, up top here. And we need some support beams across here. And these are the stairs that get you up to the top. And then we've got a nice little cabin up here. Fill that in, have a nice silhouette, and maybe there is a light on up there. Whoa. There we go. And we might even be able to indicate a little bit of glowing off of the roof here. With the gray. And that front side. Okay, there we go. I hope you've enjoyed this tour of the EGA palette and this night starry sky. I hope to see you again next time. Thank you.